Okay, welcome to Life After Statehood on Think Tech. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Our show today is called Food in Hawaii, and we're going to talk about how Hawaii has, whether Hawaii has become an eater's paradise. We're going to address the issue of whether, you know, we have done what we should have done about food. We have lots of food, but our food and dining facilities may actually be not as good as we would like. If you want to ask a question, participate in the discussion of this show, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 415-871-2474. Our guest today is, of course, our informed citizen, Ray Tsuchiyama. So within our diversity and our tourism, we have had the opportunity to become a global paradise in food. Are we that now, Ray? And if not, what should we do about it? Great question, because we think that we live in a food paradise, and we think that we have the world's greatest cuisine, but rarely do we hear of our friends or tourists come here because of the food, when you think about it. Yeah, uh, they come here because of the beaches, the clean air, the exotic culture, but rarely you hear that, oh, I'm here because of the world-class gourmet cooking or no. the, the uh, foods of, of Asia reinterpreted in a way that uh, exceeds uh, the Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong, London, Paris, uh, even Miami or Vegas. I mean, when you think about Las Vegas, that has transformed into a gourmet's paradise Indeed. in the last 15, I was there years. recently, and I agree with you. Not only is it gourmet, but it's relatively inexpensive gourmet. How about that? You <laughs> know? Right. Well, uh, they subsidize it so that, you know, for a cheap buffet, uh, under $20 probably, uh, they draw you into the casino. So, so it is uh, one of the draws that they have, yeah. and the shows itself. So there's not only dining, culture, and then gambling to uh, really draw people in. You're absolutely right. And is it that um, it costs, um, you know, effective to eat in Hawaii? Not really, not really. For the cost performance, like, you know, or return on investment on food, it's, uh, you know, the uh, quality of a Big Mac is more like the same as in the U.S. or hamburgers and so forth. And it's quite expensive when you think about it. Yeah, well, I went to lunch today at a downtown restaurant, and I, this hasn't happened to me regular, but they, um, I'm not going to mention the name because right. my comments are unkind, <laughs> okay. but they charged me $5 for a little glass of orange juice oh. that big. And I walked out of the place and I said, you, you guys are really over the top. I don't know what it is. I feel that sense of victimization here about the $5, you know. And of course, and I'll go back and I'll have to pay $5 again. But, but you know, the problem is that it, it goes back to the root problem that land is too expensive relative to all other things and restaurants have to have space. There, it's a facility which requires space and they, they have to make a profit or at least stay above water. And so they got to they got to push the price up, and they got to you know push the expenses down in order to stay alive, and that has affected the ability of you know of the what do you want to call it the young entry into food. I went to Brooklyn not too long okay, ago. Okay, Brooklyn, yeah. You know, and Brooklyn, New York. There's, there's a renaissance in in uh, downtown Brooklyn. Uh, you know, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Right. All that overlooking the. the gentrification. Uh, You're talking about gentrification, also, right? Yes, yeah, right. Right. Well, you, you know, these old restaurants have become new restaurants. Mm -hmm. Young people have gotten involved. They spend some money. They make them beautiful, and they move, make the food the best in the world they can make. It is worth walking over the Brooklyn Bridge to get there. <laughs> you know, okay. walking a mile. I walk. A mile for a different meal, right. a good meal, right. <clears throat> and that's what they have in Brooklyn. So we could have done that. We could, our young people could have done that, but they haven't done it. They can't afford the rent for one thing, but there must be other reasons. What do you think? That's a very good question. Uh, but again, you have to look at the market uh, of customers, right? And of course, um, you go to big supermarkets, you go to Costco's. What do you see there? You see families buying huge amounts of food. What are they going to do with it? They cook it on the beach. They have parties at home. Is Hawaii really a go out to eat rest at a re nice restaurant or you know uh, gourmet cooking or uh, really exploratory culture, or are we really conservative eaters and really eat the things that we grew up with in more quantity sometimes, yeah, so, yeah. or uh, what we uh, see as comfort foods. I mean, the, the word is comforting to uh, yourself, and that is comforting to one's family and so forth. And, and in New York, you, ha you have restaurants and cuisines from every place in the world. 
from, uh, from Italy to Ethiopia to Japan. In fact, there's better Japanese restaurants in New York than in Tokyo because yeah. the palates of New Yorkers are so refined that they know, and it's not the more expensive uh, places, it's hot dogs and pretzels and even the ha uh, halal guys on, you know, by uh, 52nd Street and, and 6th Street. On the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're fabulous. And they have a line People walk up, they wait around the block for that. I, I've been Landlords yeah. actually <laughs> build benches outside their properties <laughs> right. so people can sit and eat from the halal right. guys. And they've, they've kind of like franchised. They have you know, halal trucks, halal boy trucks uh, all over, all over uh, New York City. And there's uh, Ethiopian restaurants and so, and, and Nepalese. And so there's explosion. Why? There's also immigrants. Immigrants coming to New York, and they're at the at the you know ground level. It used to be taxi cabs, right? They really get going. Well, to in some extent, yeah, it still yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, it's uh, like I said before, it's uh, uh, it's easy to find somebody who speaks English, and, you know, in in Amsterdam than in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but again, uh, restaurants are a key to really becoming um, you know chasing the American dream. And I think in New York, people go out of the way. To to find, you know, oh, did you hear the one about the, you know, Upper West Side or the new place in sure. Brooklyn? Or, uh, you know, I have I only eat pizza in, you know, in Williams uh, uh, or whatever uh, Williamstown or uh, South Bronx or something. They, everybody has a secret place that yeah. nobody else knows yeah. that they go to. The Black Book of Restaurants. That's right, and and they have, of course, Michelin, you know, a three star, four star, they're very high up there. And they're very explorative people. And are Hawaiian residents people really that exploratory, uh, innovative? And I would say no. Well, I think they're they're into routine. You go to the same restaurant over and over. <laughs> you make friends right. with the owner, and um, get a, you get a you know a big hello when you walk in or whatever. And you go there again and again. On Tuesdays we go to this place, and on Thursdays we go to this place. But you know, I think it's an interesting question about volume versus quality. Right. Um, you know, Sam Choi was a good example of, you know, the, what do you call it, the, the, uh, the big plate full of, um, oh, you know, it's a big plate full of food. It was an egg and a hamburger. Oh, Loco Moco. Loco Moco, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And, you know, tons of food. Yeah, yeah. In, in Kona, he had right. a restaurant, tons of food, and all his restaurants right. here, tons of food. But, it, you know, in terms of quality, it was not quality, it was quantity. And, you know, you got you to bargain. Likewise, people go to Costco, you know, and buy huge right. volumes of, that doesn't mean when they get home they're going to make something beautiful. They're probably not. Um, but, you know, I, I'm conflicted on that because there's a lot of restaurants in town, little wee restaurants, a lot of Asian restaurants right. particularly, where, where people go all the time. They, they don't have to go to Costco. I, there must be a tension on that, you know, a, sort of a competition um, by, by people who want to go buy lots of food at Costco and, and tank up, you know, <laughs> right. and, and then people who, no, they don't want to do that. They want to go to their favorite Asian restaurant and eat just, you know, just Asian food quietly in the restaurant. I think it's a, uh, going back to 2080 rule. 20% of those people will go to 80% of the time to these restaurants. Yeah. And 80% of people really don't go out that much. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, of course, uh, can mingle and be part of a uh, culture of people who really try restaurants and go to Italian or Chinese or, or Vietnamese or, or whatever, or Japanese restaurants. Uh, but a lot of people, like my parents, uh, I'll give you an example, uh, were very reticent to try new places. Very, very reticent. Uh, and, but you're correct about the airport. They like the airport restaurant for some reason. They love oh, the coffee there. I remember there. back yeah. when, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They love the coffee there. And well, there was something exciting about the place, too. It was in the airport, right? right? <laughs> but there weren't that many, uh, growing up in the 60s, there weren't that many Japanese restaurants. And uh, you would expect that sushi was uh, all around uh, Hawaii, but no, it came in later in the 80s and 90s. So it really exploded. And it, became, it came in because the, uh, the Japanese tourists right. it didn't come in. It wasn't, uh, people here in Hawaii who are Japanese, who knew about Japanese food, were not out there making fancy restaurants. They weren't doing that. They were actually, I think they were trying to get away. They were trying to assimilate. They were trying to, you know, get the holly food or something. Um, then the Japanese came in and spent big bucks and, um, you know, put these restaurants together. I remember one restaurant on Makaloa Street that had fish that was still alive. <laughs> You remember that one? Sadas. Sadas, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, fish that was still alive. Um, but, you know, th th that was foreign investment. Right. That was not locally developed right. at all. 
And so we, we didn't participate in a great franchise that we could have participated in. We let other people do it for us. Well, you're correct that, you know, uh, you know there aren't any Portuguese restaurants. Uh, there should be. You know, there are more Hawaiian restaurants. There are very few. Uh, of course, there's some Chinese and, of course, a growing number of Vietnamese and Japanese restaurants. But, uh, you know, you go back to the plantation and we go back to the, and there was a great sharing of food. Uh, the cow cow tin uh, that people brought to yeah. lunch and uh, people brought their own food and they would exchange food. Oh, this is really great. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah. So the evolution of, of meals and uh, I'll take Thanksgiving for, as an uh, example. At Thanksgiving, I have a friend who not only loves turkey, but unless there's noodles there and tomake sushi, it's not Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. Everything is on the table, yeah. yeah. Everything, you know, sashimi has to be there for Thanksgiving, <laughs> uh, plus the turkey and the, uh, and the pumpkin pie. Uh, and so that evolved the kind of smorgasbord, if I can use a, that word, uh, at the table for both, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, for uh, big events like uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And, uh, you know, uh, and the uh, many families that get together and uh, even though they're not Japanese at all have sashimi on New Year's, right? So it's, it's a, kind of a amalgam of a tradition and uh, they see something happening on the other you know, uh, house, they kind of copy it and, and so forth. So that kind of evolved and it's uh, like religion also. I mean, people who are not Christian go to Shinto shrine on New Year's and uh, I'm not Christian but I go to you know, uh, uh, Christmas uh, uh, you know, uh, big uh, 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 thing at the St. Andrews Cathedral. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. so, so uh, I think it's a melting pot, but you're right. It, uh, even if that's uh, being developed, we haven't refined it. There's no refining we of that made experience. It, uh, we haven't made an attraction out of it. No. You know, that's the thing. I think food is really an important part of the Hawaii experience. You know, it used to be you got out in the woods, you went to the beach, you right. hiked on the mountains. Those things are not possible anymore. Now it's more like media entertainment, one kind or another, um, and food. Right. And food is, is everywhere, and, but it's not necessarily good food, and the restaurants are not necessarily vying for your attention. They're not like in Brooklyn, you know, where, where you put your whole heart and soul into it. Um, and and uh, so many of them are with foreign money, money offshore. Right. Um, you know, recently Anaha was developed and on uh, Oahe Street there in the Victoria Ward country, and um, it's right near Kamake, you remember? Right, and right. and uh, there's, a, there's a Nobu's in there, right, it's my right. favorite taste treat okay, of right. all restaurants. Okay, and my wife and I went, and we had some sushi. We, we, we had to get through. Obama had just been there, right? <laughs> so it was crowded. Everybody was attracted right. to it. Um, and we had to sit at the sushi bar, and we had a moderate amount of sushi, 200 bucks. Right. And I'm saying to myself, you know, okay, we got homeless a, a block away. We got a, an apartment in that building for $100 million, so maybe 95. Um, and, and we got sushi that cost 200 bucks. Um, this is really not part of an experience that most people in Hawaii really have any contact or need for. Um, and, and I'm thinking, gee, why don't we have a local Nobu's? Why don't we have some, even copy Nobu's, you know, it's okay. Uh, come up with some really right. good Japanese food. But that really isn't happening. Even the tea houses, which used to be so really exquisite, yeah, you, know, you know, there's only one left Natsunoya, that I know Natsunoya, of. Natsunoya, Natsunoya, Natsunoya that's yeah, the only yeah, one. Nice, right. yeah. We could have developed that. Maybe we still can. You know, you got all these kids talking about agriculture and diversified agriculture and trying to build farms. I'm not sure there's a lot of success in that. But what about restaurants, real restaurants, real competitive restaurants? Compete with Nobu's, okay, and charge them only 50 bucks. And you, a, a crowd will be the path to your door, no? But there has been uh, one export to the mainland that uh, you know, uh, we can uh, really point out as an entrepreneurial success, l and that's true. Yeah, that, that, that went the other way. Yeah, but that was a franchise and made a lot of people. It's not you know, gourmet, uh, actually. Yeah, you know, right. it's not gourmet. <laughs> but uh, interesting enough, I, even 30 years ago, somebody told me that you know you take you know, local moco and a plate lunch to areas like Seattle, Oakland, L.A., and you know uh, Connecticut. Uh, I was or Vegas. I would say, oh, it will fail. But there are now, it, it also aligned with uh, you know, 60, 70,000 former Hawaii residents who fled uh, Hawaii for economic reasons, uh, you know, living in those areas, provided a market right. for uh, Hawaii you know, food that they dreamed about Hawaii. There it is, L&L &L, uh, Drive-In. So um, uh, that went the other way. And uh, oddly enough, it's, uh, it, it found a market. 
Yeah. Ray, at this point, I'm getting a little hungry. I got to I got to have a little nosh here. Let's can we take a one minute okay. break so I can, you know, replenish? Okay. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host of Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is uh, Life After Statehood with Ray Tsuchiyama and me. He's an informed citizen, and we have these moments of nostalgia and, um, all, you know, retrospection about what has happened since statehood and where are we now. You know, he, for, he who forgets history is bound to relive it. And where we, we, we can go. <laughs> and where we can, the possibilities, yeah. yeah. We had to sort of put this together. We had to, you know, assimilate. Uh, synthesize all the elements and influences in Hawaii and the history at least since statehood and try to make something of it. So one of the things is I remember Jolly Roger oh, yes, in, yes. in Waikiki yeah. on Kalakaua Avenue. Yeah. They had an outdoor restaurant there. It was so popular, so sweet. You know, part of an outdoor yeah. restaurant, Ray, um, and I'm thinking of Montpellier, France, <laughs> this huge okay. square right. of outdoor restaurants, right? right? Like in Europe, Europe, where it's cold and windy right. sometimes, yeah, yeah, Europe, yeah. where the weather isn't half as good as ours, they have restaurants outside right. everywhere. Yeah, in fact, in New York, it's copying them, right. restaurants everywhere. Can you think of a single restaurant in Waikiki that's actually outside? Used to be more than there are now. Yeah. What happened to us? Yeah, that's, that's a very good uh, question uh, because it really integrates the sidewalk outside, inside, uh, food, and, and people watching. People watching, uh, yeah, very it's important. A, you know, extension of the restaurant to the street. Um, and uh, you're right, in most uh, capitals of Europe, it's, it's uh, you know, standard, de rigueur. Uh, it, it is uh, something that uh, really livens up uh, a place. Now, you can look at a, a restaurant no longer with us, Kyoya, for example, in Waikiki. It was very, very much a, a, like a fortress. That's <laughs> true. The, the architecture side, yeah, was yeah, right. clearly a fortress. And, yeah. and um, it was, but when you went in, you, you uh, uh, imagine yourself back in Japan or you had Japanese food and so forth. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it was very big for a while, and then nobody really went to Waikiki for uh, you know high-end dining anymore, like the canvases. That's very true, like Ray. The it, and, it and declined yeah. in recent years, yeah. and that's that's probably the same process as why movies declined there. <laughs> right. It was yeah. too hard to get right. in there. It was too expensive yeah. when you got there, um, and you could find something that would satisfy you. And it was dedicated to the tourists, you know. Right. Right. And if you if if a local person feels that a restaurant dedicated to He's not going to go. He's maybe once a year well, for a special occasion. Cheeseburger Factory has the highest volume revenues uh, yeah, ever heard in that. all the franchises. Yeah. Right there. It's a huge. It's huge. Yeah. It doesn't make me want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and we, I think in a, a prior show, I talked about um, Canlis, for example, with kimono clad waitresses uh, serving, um, you know, steaks and lobsters. Wow. That's an Asian Western fusion. It was lovely. Fusion, fusion, it was right? lovely. It was a tragedy. We lost yeah, it. But it's a very early fusion kind of thinking. And then you go uh, in time, there are many interesting uh, kind of architecture like uh, tops or cocos, you know, the uh, kind of way out like Flint, Flintstone kind of a Polynesian architecture and so forth. And that's again, a very un uh, that's all gone from Waikiki. So you have a lot of, and I think Chains. that's where you want, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, importation of brands like the Outbacks and uh, Red Lobsters and so forth and so on in Waikiki, but it does make a person from Peoria or um, you know Idaho feel at home because yeah. that's that's something that they ate on the mainland. Therefore, yeah. it must taste the same uh, in Hawaii. Right. And nothing else presents itself. If we had fabulous restaurants here, they might be yeah. at home in those too. Uh, if they, right. you have to feel a level of confidence and trust before you go and that's spend right. a lot of money. You know, Michelle's, for example, yeah. you know, been around a long time, oh, still there. Still still around, and, and uh, again, I can't name another, oh, there's Lemaire's and so forth, but there's very few, like one hand, 
a traditional French style, you know, heavy sauce kind of, uh, and you have to wear a jacket kind of uh, kind of place. Yeah. And that's all. That used to be far more prevalent in the 70s into the 80s, and it disappeared. Uh, that kind of culture is no longer with us, and it's slower dining. You know, things made at you know at at your table, and you know, Caesar salads and, sure, and the sure. cherry flambe and and the steak tartare. Wow, uh, that's all gone. Uh, that, that's yeah. a kind of a dining experience you have to go to Vegas <laughs> for, yeah. or New York. But you get, you get process here, like the Cheesecake Factory. You know, they expect you're going to spend only so much time at the table. Let's go, let's right. go, let's go. Uh, and you, you feel like you're on a balance sheet somewhere as a profit item. And sorry, but I, I don't go for that much. So, so Well, I want to go back to what we're talking about, market and you know, consumer taste and so forth. And um, you know, the evolution of consumer taste is that I, I, I would argue is very conservative in Hawaii. And when, uh, when restaurants come in and bring a refined taste, a refined kind of restaurant, sometimes it just doesn't go over. I'll give you an example. Ichidai in Alamoana, uh, tempura, all right? In Japan, if you have a sushi place, that's all they serve. Tempura, that's all they serve. Yakitori, that's all they serve. Yeah, specialized. They, they don't have udon or noodles or whatever. And, and then uh, we were there uh, recently, my spouse and I, and we discovered that they're serving sushi now. They're serving uh, noodles. And that's what people expect. They expect, uh, and, and I'm coming to it, a makai market in every restaurant. <laughs> where every person in the family can order what they really want to eat. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> That's why Makai Market and so I, successful. Is, is unbelievably um, you know, high, high volume uh, uh, space because at the same table, you can have a pizza, a, a Japanese uh, noodles, curry and you know and steak right 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 there and that's what people want yeah <laughs> and the barrier of course is getting there and getting parking and, <laughs> right. and, and coping with the crowds but, I, I, I but it is very popular uh, huge numbers there yeah. huge numbers so uh, we haven't talked about fast food I remember uh, let's see middle 70s maybe 75 or so um, McDonald's first right. McDonald's was at Aina Haina and it's still there, uh, and rebuilt it two or wow, three times, yeah, you know? It's quite an uh, evolution. And I say, yeah. well, you know, what about Okazu, Okazu yeah. Yeah. what happened to Okazu yeah. um, This I prefer the Okazu the food's healthier right, and all that, right. but there's McDonald's, and there's lines around right, McDonald's, right. and there's another one and another one proliferating through the islands, and now it's going to be hugely popular. I'm sure it's more popular than the, the competitors, Burger King and the like, and Taco Bell, and, and what's the other one, uh, whatever. Um, but fast food has a huge foothold in Hawaii. Right. Now, this is kind of tragic right. in the sense that we have a diverse cultural population. We have diverse, you know, food. We right. could have diverse food. Instead, we trundle down to McDonald's and have an inordinate number of meals at McDonald's. I'm not saying it's bad. Food's pretty good, actually, considering fast food. But this is not you know what we really need to have we need to preserve the culture we need to preserve the cultural foods uh, we need to improve on them instead of um, you know capitulating to mainland processed food and processed menus and all that and you know if you ask me what we need to do here about food I would say more local food more organic food more food from diversified agriculture more creative food Brooklyn style <laughs> <laughs> you know and let's put it all as you say the Thanksgiving dinner let's put it all on the table let's make Hawaii cuisine completely diverse yeah. and let's make it first class not only the food but the service the presentation right. and point. the facilities right. let's make it world famous what would you add to that well I think you have to you're talking about an ecosystem really, yes really and um, where do people go to study culinary arts community colleges so, and I, I was at UH Maui College uh, for a while, and, and um, they have a fantastic class act uh, restaurant there that they serve lunches, I think, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Thursday Fridays, I, uh, at least, or at least it's five, very good. two or three. It's, it's five star. It's amazing. And they have students working in the front of the house uh, of the restaurant and the back uh, of the business. So that's, they learn how to interact with customers, take orders, uh, finances, and of course, how to uh, get all the ingredients together. Uh, 
lot of things going on. Uh, another place that just opened, uh, the former Cannon Club, right? Oh, is that open now? Yeah, it's, the, the, it's, it's like um, it's shaking down, it's going through trials, and uh, that will be a culinary powerhouse. Who's running it? Uh, Capilano Community oh, College. Oh, it's part of the same school? That, exactly, oh, exactly. How so, excellent. Yeah, so, so that's, a, uh, again, a, and so, and Leeward also has a restaurant there. Uh, Capilano has had a restaurant for many uh, years, and in fact, I ate at the original uh, when Capilano was still uh, adjacent to McKinley High School. I had a great uh, wow. uh, four or five course of meal I remember there. those days, yeah. yeah. It was, it was right beautiful. Right at the corner of yeah, Capilano and Pensacola. It was, Pensacola. It was yeah. you know, a professor took me there. It was unbelievable, a French meal. Yeah. Uh, so that's where it all begins, and that's where a lot of people uh, try to go out and uh, apply their uh, skills to uh, uh, really opening, uh, you know, the trucks, uh, food trucks, and, and small restaurants. And food trucks are in the entryway, the entry oh, to. Oh, I think uh, we have yeah. we we can't finish this program right. without talking about food trucks. Um, that's it's fabulous what happened. Uh, Pony Askew, do you know her? No. She's the one who organized the whole food truck experience oh. in the middle of Kaka'ako oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe five, six years yeah. ago, and it was just sp splendid. And all these people came from all over the island with all their food from crepes to Mexican <laughs> right. to everything yeah. you want, and some of it was very good. Yeah. And the problem with food trucks is where do they go? Right, where right, can you put right. them? She tried so hard, yeah. they tried so hard, you know, retain a place. I'm not sure they have, but we need food trucks. We need them as part of our, you know, Los Angeles, special Angeles, culture. Yeah, you know? Very big now. In Seattle, uh, you know, Portland, uh, they're part of the landscape of uh, restaurants and food trucks. So they're symbiotic, and then they grow, and then um, uh, really you open up a brick and mortar place, and then you know because of the experience that you sure, want to go. you go one step to that's the right, other. That's yeah. right. You go one, uh, one step. And so so that that's part of it. And the other thing uh, is, of course, where do you get the materials? Uh, you know, the vegetables, the uh, meats, and so forth. And uh, coming back, and we can devote another show to this, uh, I think uh, there's been uh, a lack of focus to applying uh, computers, robotics, high-tech ways of growing food, other than putting a seed in the ground. No, in Japan, they have huge hydroponic you know, uh, uh, setups in former semiconductor plants, <laughs> for example. Yeah. The, you know, it's it's and they don't use that much water. The problem with uh, with uh, uh, agriculture today is water, and and it disappears through you know uh, through the sun, through you know evaporation, many things. So you 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 want to use less water and to measure it, you know, through pipes and software and computerization. So that that's uh, an area where computer science, uh, where robotics. Agriculture, tropical, you know, it has to really combine forces. It's, it's, it's obvious what we should do. However, the, the old problem is who, who moves first. Um, so is it industry? Is it the hotels? I'm not sure the hotels are really motivated for this. They want to serve the tourists, but not the local. They don't care to establish a, a local restaurant industry, um, mostly, you know, feeding the hotels. Um, I'm not sure it's the Department of Agriculture because they haven't really done all that much in developing diversified agriculture. And they've had a long time since the plantations closed. They've had at least, uh, you know, lip service for that, but it hasn't happened. Um, who is it? Is it the market? Is it you and me? Is it the investors? Investors here or elsewhere who, who meet these young kids I, I think it's a, it and make be them do capitalists. Capitalists. <laughs> to, You got to look at uh, not agriculture uh, as a structural model. You have to look at venture capital and software and startups as the model for, uh, for getting this off. Uh, now, this is very ironic. If you go back to the early to mid-90s, David Murdoch was introducing, introducing organic vegetables and meats in Coila Lodge. Yeah. So he is far ahead of his time. Yeah. And he was attracting people from Silicon Valley who would pay, you know, high prices for foods that would be medicinally or physically or mentally beneficial to them. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. And that's something. Health foods. Yeah, health, yeah that's you know, that, but that was in the '90s, and and that's something that he saw, foresaw coming in the future. And I think that's where we have to carve a niche. That when you come to Hawaii. Foods are uh, are really good for you physically, mentally. That makes you live longer, detoxify you, sure. anti cancer. A hundred year experience, the health experience. Yes, right. So it's health, okay? It's taste. It's got to right. be. It's always got to be taste. It's diversity. Right. Uh, it's local. And hopefully, it's not too expensive, and everyone can enjoy democratization of food. <clears throat> Maybe you and I should open a restaurant, Ray. <laughs> you, know, you know what they say, restaurants. And, and also, there's another part that we can devote another uh, uh, show to is, uh, um, uh, is nutrition education in schools. 
See, the school lunch in Japan, they, they publish recipes and parents buy recipe books because it's so good and they use locally uh, sourced food, they never use frozen food, and they use uh, uh, materials grown in that area. What DOA school does that? You see what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's the crux of the problem. I think if children learn how to eat really well, that uh, will uh, endure through their adult lives. One last thought, and that is I visited the school district in North Kohala, oh. and there's a school there, um, elementary or middle school, that's actually doing that. Um, they're growing food, a big garden in the back right. in North Kohala. It's really impressive. And the neighbor islands can have their share of this great new thing. Where, you know, that's where it could start. Anyway, Ray, great to talk to you, as always. We have to do this again soon. All right, food is great. Food is great. <laughs> that's food is good. what we Eat are. Food. We need. <laughs> Thank you, Ray Tsuchiyama, okay. informed citizen on ThinkTech. Life after statehood. That's right. <laughs> Aloha.